Michigan Magazine is kept on the road by our many Michigan friends. Cops and Donuts Bakery, downtown Clare, what began as a crazy idea among nine police officers to purchase the historic Clare City Bakery, quickly became an international phenomenon, carrying out a Michigan tradition with delicious donuts, pies, pastries, breads, original coffee, and more, plus a full menu at the new adjacent Traffic Stop Diner. Downtown Clare, a winning combination, Cops and Donuts. The Michigan-made rebounding mailbox pool. Never again worry about the winter snowplow taking out your mailbox with this ingenious rebounding pool. Your mailbox takes a hit and keeps coming back year after year. Call now or visit their website, toughmailboxes.com. Jerry's joined at West Branch and with the best burgers in town. Jerry's has a full menu, but when you order the burger steaming hot, they're made the way you like it. Stack time, made to order, add fries, and you've got a complete meal. Jerry's joined at West Branch, home of the best burgers in town. Hi, welcome to Michigan Magazine. I'm Barry Stutzman. Glad you could join us on today's show. It's Stagecoach Trunks and Sled Dogs. From a couple creating a business out of a craft of love, to a young girl's dreams coming true, racing sled dogs to the Iditarod finishing line. We're hitting the proverbial back roads first to Belding, Michigan, the home of Perkins Stagecoach Trunks, where the old world tradition continues, one handcrafted stagecoach trunk at a time. Then to Algonac and the Batchelder family, who are on a mission to send daughter, 12-year-old Courtney Batchelder, to the 167-mile junior Alaskan Iditarod. Stay tuned, it's all coming up on this week's Michigan Magazine. Announcing the Michigan Paddle Sports Directory, or one-stop internet connection at michiganpaddlesports.com. It's now possible to explore Michigan's extensive waterways like never before. Michigan Paddle Sports Directory is a comprehensive directory of canoe and kayak rentals and liveries throughout the entire state of Michigan. At michiganpaddlesports.com, you'll find a great paddling route, outfitter, store, school, rental shop, or tour guide. Michigan's great waterways are waiting for you. Make it an adventure worth remembering by first visiting michiganpaddlesports.com. The old stagecoaches of yesteryear traversed Michigan and the country, shuttling passengers and cargo, leading the way as an original form of mass transportation, going places that railroads couldn't even touch. Though the ride was rough, it was an essential way for people to travel. Luggage was thrown atop the wagon and had to be made of rugged, enduring material. That was essential if you valued your personals. The stagecoach trunk was both rugged and sometimes quite beautiful, depending on the ability and care of the carpenter. The stagecoach trunk could at times be considered artwork. To many, their entire life was encased within that enclosure. Some may consider stagecoach trunk making a lost art, especially here in the Midwest. Those stagecoach connoisseurs that do exist have always thought they had to scour the southwestern states to find a trunk maker today of any stature or respectability. Not so, as Michigan Magazine has discovered just such a craftsman in the Belding, Michigan area. Arthur Perkins and his wife Marsha Perkins are doing quite well, thank you, in producing a top quality stagecoach trunk, one trunk at a time, emblazoned with artistry that rings of the Old West. Art, Marsha, tell us, how did this all come about? I believe the uh, beginning of it was from the encouragement of my wife. She had uh, asked in 96, had uh, I had any dreams I wanted to fulfill here at in life uh -huh. and one of them was to build or handcraft the uh, stagecoach trunks. Why did that, uh, why did you have that drive to do that? I mean what was it? Maybe I'm an old cowboy. There you know. go. Anyway, <laughs> um, I had restored the old trunks for many years not only as a business but for individuals mm -hmm. and we had done 25 plus years of doing that so my knowledge, although these trunks were begin in 96, my knowledge goes back quite a ways to uh, the construction of the trunks. Uh, they were of interest to me uh, because they were from the Old West. Mm -hmm. And later in life here, I have learned that my great-grandfather was a carpenter. So some of the woodworking experiences I believe I've inherited from that gentleman. Uh -huh. A very favorite uncle I had was a leather crafter. He made saddles, harness, uh, you name it. And I can recall that as a boy going into his old leather shop in McBride, Michigan and watching him work on the leather. Oh. 
And then the smell of leather mm -hmm. is what's always intriguing me. Yeah, it always sticks and into your mind. Yeah. 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 So really you had uh, the Old West kind of in your genes more or less and you really didn't bring it out until later exactly. life. Now Marcia, you saw this potential here? I, mean, I sure uh, did. You kind of steered him in the right direction? Or I sure kind did. Of you bet. It was encouraging to do that. Um, he does an excellent job of anything that he does. And uh, it's hard to find the old trunks anymore. So to build a new one, you have a good base to work with. Everything's even and solid. And uh, he, he's just blooming with, with the talent. I watch as he carves these different designs and patterns and the ideas he comes up with. He's just, it's fun to watch this develop. Oh, and especially when you see somebody doing something they love to do. Exactly. Which is you know, an amazing exactly. process to watch. What is so unique and different about a stagecoach trunk than any other trunk? Is it the heritage or is it the heritage the um, and the history behind it? Mm -hmm. uh, for many, many years, this is how we traveled. You know, mm -hmm. um, we didn't have suitcases. This the trunk. Uh, goes ahead of, of the, uh, the, the suitcase, if you will. That's how folks for many, many years traveled. Mm -hmm. um, and a very quick story uh, for a lot of folks that don't know about trunks, the very first trunks were very early, and what they were is from the trunk of a tree oh. cut into about a three-foot width, if you will, uh -huh. cut in two and then hollowed out, and very crude straps of leather, whatever they could use to make the hinge. That's how the word trunk has come about. And it's come to be really, uh, when you hear the word trunk too, is a sturdy construction, something that can take the wear and tear of a perhaps a stagecoach yes. too. Yes, yeah. um, They were made in leather covered for the most part. Some later in about 1900, the newer, if you will, trunks were used, um, a canvas was used to cover them. But for the most part, leather was used. And as you see on the top of this stagecoach up here, there's one up there, they rode out in the element. Mm -hmm. Leather was uh, put on and then treated to uh, resist snow, rain. Mm -hmm. and, and the elements out there. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, Marcia, you're in the business of seeing the people's reaction and getting their feedback. I mean, I bet you it's amazing when they see the construction coming out. There are people out there who actually are hunting in search of people like you, aren't there? There are. I mean, we do not use any kind of plywoods or pressed woods. They're, they're okay for some applications. Mm -hmm. I prefer this solid pine. Solid and pine. so that's what we use as pine. Um, each trunk will weigh approximately 40 pounds when it's completed. Uh, very sturdy. You can sit on these, you can stand on them. Mm -hmm. um, each tr trunk is unique, I believe, because it is handcrafted right from the beginning. There's no uh, production line. We uh, had at one time a gentleman ask us, uh, what type of factory did we have and how many employees we had? And I said, well, you're looking at it. Yeah, yeah. Here's the employees. It doesn't bother me one bit to t tell folks. They're all basically the same size, however, no two are alike. Mm -hmm. As far as size, they may vary by eighth or sixteenth of an inch, one way or the other. Each piece, in other words, here's the bottom and the top, mm -hmm. are made to fit that one. I mean, they go together. Uh, I, I can't make uh, um, a bunch of bottoms and a bunch of tops and just throw them together. Oh, I see. Uh, so each, you take one, each one at a time. time. Yep. Yeah. They are the old trunks. They used approximately a three-eighths inch material, the, the wood stock, very flimsy. These are three-quarter inch pine. Okay. Um, yes. They are very solid. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. You can. Uh, See by the construction, they are glued very heavily and then nailed on top of that. Um, we have in the past told folks that we're going to guarantee our trunks for 100 years. The ones I have restored in the past are a lot, if, if I can, uh, they're a little flimsier, the old ones. You know, and they've lasted many, many, many years. I have uh, no qualms about saying these will last 100 years. Yeah, right. and at the end of that time, if the folks that have purchased one have a problem with it, they're welcome to return it. But anyway, that's the basic uh, structure that we start with. From there, we use oak-tanned cowhide leather. 
Nice. Um, for the leather crafter, it's about a four to five, six ounce leather, tooling leather we use. Um, uh, this is the basic start of the leather. This is the color that when we purchase it. Mm -hmm. In the beginning that we uh, start out with, each piece is cut to fit its, its place. In other words, this is the top right here. Okay. In other words, this particular one uh, is we're tooling an eagle into the top, which uh, is one of Michigan Magazine's logos. Uh, we've done a couple of variations. Now again, by tooling this pattern, this eagle particular one here, this one will not be done again. Each trunk, when it's built, that's, that's the only one we build. We don't copy. Right. So there's no production line of, of things. Each one is done differently. Um, each trunk is signed on the bottom and numbered. So, uh, so when that individual purchases one of our trunks, yes. Yeah, they buy one of a kind. They are really a, a very exclusive limited edition of one then. They that's are. it. Yeah, that's one. It. Author was quick to point out that the quality extends not only to the construction but also to the color coordinated interior. This is where Marsh's expertise shines. Beautiful made to order stagecoach trunks. What a wonderful example of a Michigan couple fulfilling their dream of working side by side in creating a quality Michigan product. A big thanks to Art and Marsha for their wonderful presentation of a trunk emblazoned with a Michigan magazine logo. Now in the Display at the Michigan Magazine Museum. Perkins Stagecoach Trunks of Belding, Michigan. Michigan Magazine is being brought to you in part by Rose City Drug, just south of the Rose City city limits at 2640 North M33, featuring a state-of-the-art, completely automated and extremely accurate computer-filled prescription process. Here at Rose City Drug, we're a family-owned and operated for over 20 years. We offer fast and friendly service, and we always take the extra step to make sure your needs are fulfilled. Randy's Restaurant and Bakery, downtown Rose City, freshly baked daily, cookies, breads, pastries, donuts, homemade pies, and more. Randy's has a full menu to tackle the heartiest appetite, including pizza and hand-dipped ice cream. Taste the freshness and savor the good times at Randy's, downtown Rose City. Hale Hardware, your do-it center in Hale, Michigan. Much more than a regular hardware store, providing everything you need for whatever your project is, along with a knowledgeable sales staff to get her done. Serving Northern Michigan since 1946. Hale Hardware, south of M65 at Ainsley in Hale. It's a sport, a pastime, and to some, an obsession that is gaining popularity year after year in the state of Michigan. It's sled dog racing. This heritage-steeped form of transportation at one time was the only way to cross vast expanses of our frozen north. Now, from the UP to throughout the Lower Peninsula, enthusiasts are hitching train dogs to the front of sleds and taking to the Michigan wilderness for recreation and international competition. On this edition, we visit the Batchelder family of Auganac. We take the sport very seriously, so much so that they now are kennel owners and have dreams of participating in the world-famous Alaskan Iditarod. Daughter, 12-year-old Courtney, is in training now to participate in the event's junior competition. That's when she'll be 14, the minimum age for the 160-mile race. The family was formerly a snowmobiling family, but as Dad Kevin tells us, things changed dramatically after they saw their first sled dog race. We spent the morning with the family at one of their favorite training camps just outside of Mile, Michigan, where Kevin and Courtney shared their story and dreams with us. So you, you just kind of gave up snowmobiling, did, and kind of went in this direction more or less? Well, uh, just... yeah, we were a snowmobile family. I mean, the kids sat on our laps, my wife's in my laps, riding on the machines. <laughs> uh, and at ages two and four, we saw our first sled dog race, and we've been hooked. Oh. Ever since then, the kids uh, went for a ride. and. <laughs> this cabin has kind of been in the family for a while, hasn't it? Yeah. Uh, over 20 years, yeah. Yeah, you, you got everything loaded, we got uh, sleds in, the, in, in your big uh, pull behind, uh, what is that, a big trailer there out there? It's a ready big, to go? Dog it's big dog it's kennel. Big dog kennel. 22-foot dog kennel yeah. with all the dogs and equipment inside. Yeah, now you have a kennel. What's the name of your kennel? Purple Mountain Kennels. Okay, and it's in uh, 
What part of the state are you from? Algonac, Michigan. Okay, but you do come up here on occasion? This is our primary training area oh, between okay. here and trails over in Hale. Oh, okay. It's a beautiful country to do that, isn't it? It's fantastic. The, the uh, hillside and the terrain gives the dogs a lot of training, up and hill, uphill, downhill training. Mm -hmm. Now, what we're involved here, too, is the Mid-Union Sled Haulers. You're a member of that, are you? Yes, we are. Okay, tell us a little bit about that. It's a, a non-profit organization, isn't it? Yes, it is. Okay. Mid-Union Mid Sled Haulers, uh, MUSH for short, sponsors nine of the 22 races here in Michigan that take place every winter. Um, as the notes, as you can note with the colored dots, mm -hmm. uh, those are all the races are located. My. And uh, some of them are independent. There's also another group in the state called GLISDA, Great Lakes Sled Dog Association. They're more the step up for the professional aspect. They race for prize money. A, uh, a physical rush, a mental rush that comes along with the racing, isn't it? Definitely. Yes. Now, we, we saw some of your dogs out there uh, getting some air this morning, and uh, uh, they love to mush, don't they? They, they sure do. As soon as they see the harnesses and the sleds start <laughs> moving around, they start getting excited. Oh, my goodness. Now, tell us a little bit about some of the locations here, if you could point some of the, the more popular ones, perhaps the ones that uh, are really significant, maybe? Well, I think the popular ones are where you're going to see a couple of dots together, meaning the two different groups uh, use the trails mm. consistently. Drummond Island has a beautiful trail system. Uh, Kalkaska brings mushers from all around the country down here to race, as well as the Mackinac mush um, and the UP200. Compared to other states in the Union, uh, how would you rank as far as popularity as Sled Dog Michigan and the other ones? When we became involved in the sport in 1995, uh, there's about 120 memberships in our organization that, uh, in mush. Mm -hmm. Now it's pushing 200. Mm -hmm. Now that's membership. So a family membership, we have four teams for one membership. I see. And so at any given race, there could be as few as 100 teams to 200. Mm -hmm. But it, it is a, it's growing popularity then. It, it definitely is. I think one key to that is that Michigan is home to five sled manufacturers, oh. Frank Hall down in Jackson, right. uh, which I understand was on your show sure. a few years back, and um, several others around the state, um, Risden Rigs and Superior Sleds up in the UP, uh, Thunderfeet Kennels on the other side of the state. That's definitely a drive to the sport, uh, being that the equipment is accessible locally and you can get it and um, and also with the club we get together and train and uh, people can learn and we, we mentor them along. Yeah. Good support group. Great support group. Great support group. Uh, what prompted you? What got your adrenaline going, your thoughts of, I guess you were well, into snowmobiling more than we, you were snowmobiling. We were a snowmobile family and uh, I've exceeded that 100 mile mark on a snowmobile but the adrenaline rush behind a sled team out of the chute at 30 miles an hour Oh. Fire surpasses that. Um, but what really prompted it, my daughter Courtney uh, was in preschool and they talked about forms of transportation and one form of transportation was a dog sled which directed us up to the Mackinac Mush and at that time the kids went for a ride, they had spectator rides for the kids and uh, so the kids went for a ride, I helped a few teams to the line and we've been really hooked ever since then. We came back the next year with our own team of three dogs and and had a great time. The rest is history. What is it about the Iditarod that draws the people? Uh, I think it's the romance of knowing you're out there against the elements and it, it's you against Mother Nature or along with Mother Nature really. Um, you're out there with 10 to 16 of your best buddies mm -hmm. you know going along the trail. Is that the ultimate experience for many? Definitely people? is. I think just about anyone that hooks up a sled team romances about that. The realities are, are financially, it's, it's quite right. limiting to do that race. However, some of the races here in Michigan, um, you can get into some of those conditions. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. especially training, Courtney and I have come up on a herd of deer. You know, we mm -hmm. snuck right up on them. You couldn't yeah, do that with a snowmobile, snowmobile too yeah. easy. <laughs> so Courtney's dream is coming to reality more or less kind of quickly for many people. She's going to be hopefully experiencing the Iditarod, the uh, junior. The junior Iditarod, mm -hmm. which is 160 miles, Ooh, okay. which is a two-day event for her. Mm -hmm. And uh, they'll camp out overnight on the trail. There's no assistance at all. And uh, again, it's just they're responsible for their, their dogs and uh, the care of them as they travel across the great state of Alaska. Mm -hmm. um, well, I wanted to um, have a better bond with my animals. Mm -hmm. And I want to be a veterinarian, so this would be um, a good experience for me. Uh, what do you have to do to take care and make sure that they're uh, ready for racing? Oh, uh, make sure they're unconditioned, mm -hmm. and make sure they have the proper nutrition. And mm -hmm. 
What do you have to remember when you get on the back of a sled? I mean, are there certain things you've got to take uh, to account before you get the dogs going? you got to make sure they're all harnessed right? Or what do you have to do? Well, you have to remember never to let go. Never let go. Yeah. No matter what happens, right? Yeah. Okay. Have you ever had any experiences like that? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> but they know your voice, though, don't they? Yeah. So what is it that you like about it? Everything. Everything? Yep. Yeah. Is it kind of cold, or do you, do you don't recognize the cold when you're out there? I don't really recognize really? it. Really? Yeah. You just keep on going. So what do you hope to do with uh, your racing? Are you just going to, you know, this is more or less a hobby, or do you want to take this more professionally, or are you just like doing what you're doing now? Just like do what I'm doing now. Yeah. And what Courtney is doing now is something she loves. You can tell it in her determination and dedication to her team and training. As the morning progressed, we also learned that Courtney was a good teacher, and she told me a bit about the basics of driving. She even let me try my hand. The one thing I learned was that she and her family deserve a lot of credit for mastering this art, which is a lot harder than it looks. With that, we wish the Batchelder family of Algonac the best in their sled dogging adventures, and we'll be watching for the name Courtney Batchelder to be appearing soon on the roster of participants and perhaps winners of future Alaskan Iditarods. It's always a great time when we get together, but it's even better when we get off those beaten paths and bring you new stories from Michigan. Have a great week. We'll see you here next week on RFD or online. We'd like to thank all those that help keep Michigan Magazine on the road. Discount Foods Downtown Mayo. Find national name brand foods and merchandise at sharply discounted prices. Shop the smart way and please the family without breaking the budget. Discount Foods Downtown Mayo. Clemex Sales and Service on Mapes Road, west of Mile, your complete recreational vehicle sales and service connection. Visit their beautiful showroom of new and pre-owned ATVs, lawnmowers, power equipment, snowmobiles, utility vehicles, and more. Clemex Sales and Service is also the home of the American-made Victory Motorcycle line on display at Clemex on Mapes Road, Mayo. The Art of Amalia Jonas is at the art store in Lupton, Michigan. Stop by her gallery or visit her online to purchase that perfect masterpiece or sign up for private lessons. Begin your journey journey into the world of art by capturing the inspiration around you under the personal direction of Amalia Jonas at the Art Store. Cops and Donuts Bakery, downtown Clare, a winning combination. Cops and Donuts.